The parts washer has long been considered a workhorse of an industrial environment, though these critical machines are not all created equal. A good parts washer can remove contaminants while increasing productivity and reducing labor expenses. And the technology has come a long way over the years. Just how much has this critical technology changed? Well, to learn more, we are joined today by Keith Hiss, the CEO of Better Engineering. For 60 plus years, Better Engineering has been at the forefront of the design and manufacturing of industrial cleaning machines, also known as parts washers, for various industrial food and pharmaceutical processing centers across the globe, meaning there are no better experts in the industry when it comes to the evolution of the parts washer. All right, uh, thanks for joining us, Keith. Let's talk about the history of the parts washer and how that technology has changed over the years. Okay, Anna, thanks for uh, inviting me today to join you. I started with Better Engineering in 1980, so I've been here 43 years, which means I've been in the parts cleaning industry for 43 years and have seen a tremendous amount of change in that time period. The biggest shift was going from solvents to water-based cleaning. When I first started, virtually everyone was using solvents, either a tank full of solvents, they would load their parts in the tank and let them sit there, or they would have a vapor degreaser where the solvents were being heated to create a vapor zone, parts were being lowered into the vapor, and the vapor was condensing and cleaning the parts that way. Or there may just be a sink throughout the workplace where operators were cleaning by hand with solvents. So in 1980, that was the, the way they were doing it, which meant nothing had changed in 100 years. That was always the way it was done. That was the way it was still being done. But then in 1987, uh, because of a treaty called the Montreal Protocol, businesses had to stop using some of these solvents that were causing major environmental problems. Namely that some of these solvents were called HFCs, hydrofluorocarbons, the vapors were escaping the tank, um, going into the upper stratosphere of the earth and destroying the ozone layer surrounding us to protect us from UV radiation. So those solvents were banned in 1987. From 87 to 2000, virtually every business got rid of solvents and went to water-based cleaning. So because of the Montreal Protocol, businesses had to stop using solvents. They were given until 2000 to phase them out. Most businesses phased out faster than that. But by 2000, almost every business had shifted from solvent cleaning to water-based cleaning. So there was this tremendous shift uh, towards water-based cleaning. So that was the big evolution that I saw when I started in the business. And then there was a second evolution starting in 2000. Because businesses rushed to get into water-based cleaning, there was a lot of mistakes made, a lot was learned, and the big lessons learned going forward was that most water-based cleaning systems should be stainless steel, not mild steel, because a lot of systems were starting to rust. Um, another thing that was learned is that you want a system that's going to rinse the parts well so that you have spot-free cleaning. That normally means at least one rinse, maybe two or three rinses. And the third thing learned was that you want good water quality for good cleaning. So you wanna make sure the water's at least soft, but you may also wanna use reverse osmosis water or DI water for cleaning. So now in 2000, everyone had shifted, but then over the next 20 years, people are buying new systems that are cleaning at a much higher level. Okay, so let's talk about some of the evolving types of requests that you're hearing from your customers today. What is it that they need from you and how are you helping them address those goals? The biggest things that we're seeing in recent years is that customers want to develop cleaning specifications. They either already have them or they want help developing them. That means that customers want to measure the weight of particles left on the parts or the size of particles left on the parts. A typical specification for a part may be that after cleaning, there should be no more than two milligrams of solid contaminants left on the part and that none of the particles should be bigger than say 30 microns, which is borderline visible. Uh, there may be cleaning specifications for oil contaminant that we may have to do tests to prove that the amount of oil residue left on the part is below a certain level. 
So the whole realm of cleaning specifications is um, something the customer often needs help with. So that's one area. Another area is that customers want help with their complete system design. Yes, we need to focus on the parts cleaning system itself, uh, but then the customer wants us to also help with material handling, with water filtration, all the things that, that touch a parts cleaning system. And then lastly, customers want help with just water filtration in general. How can we keep the water clean so that their cleaning stays consistent throughout the work week? Uh, okay, so on, on that note, you know, we're talking about how uh, customers are um, asking you for assistance in these goals at this time. But are there new and exciting things that you think we can expect on the horizon when it comes to these industrial cleaning machines, um, how, they're, um, how you're gearing towards the future with these? Yeah, the big future trends we're seeing right now is first and foremost automation. That uh, everyone wants to automate their processes, including cleaning. So it's no longer the goal just to load a part manually, clean it automatically, and then unload it manually. All that has to happen without any operators present. So today, uh, most companies want to see a robot loading a part, a robot unloading a part. Uh, if a part has to be flipped over, all that has to be done automatically. So that's the big trend today is how can we fully automate the system? And then with that comes things like data collection so that we can send all the data from the machine to their computer system, showing that the system's running as intended. And that means we're sending all the relevant parameters to their computer system, the um, water temperatures, the water pressures, the air flows, all the things that are required for the system to work well. All that data has to be exported out to their central computer system. And then uh, they also want to see remote diagnostics that we can come into their system directly over the phone lines and diagnose a problem. So all that's hand in hand with the automation. Yeah, I'm just curious too. Um, do you think that some of these trends towards automation uh, have been accelerating specifically in these last two, three years when workforce challenges have caused people to need to kind of, um, you know, find new ways of achieving those production needs on the floor? Yes, absolutely. If you talk to anyone in the industrial field and say, are you having problems hiring labor? Everyone says they're having problems. You know, factories will have hundreds of jobs available they cannot fill. So yeah, there's been a huge push to automate because of COVID and the work the work uh, force shortages. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much, Keith. We really appreciate your insights today, talking us through uh, the evolution of parts washing. Uh, and so, um, yeah, thanks for joining us today. Thank you.